Hallelujah on this Miracle Monday. We're going to start off with prayer before we start the Bible study. We're going to be talking about the power of God change people's lives and how 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 faith works and how God moves and the example of Jesus in Luke chapter 10. And I just believe in God that if you're feeling weak, you feel like you're giving up, you feel like you're you're at the end of your rope, that this message will inspire you, encourage you, rejuvenate you, and refresh you, and that you will hold on to the Word of God and continue to look to God for the answer and continue to go forward through every challenge that you're facing in your life. Amen. Father, we just pray right now that you would just take hold of this message, Lord, that you would just allow your this word to be written on our heart and that you would just unfold it, unlock the keys to victory in our lives, Lord, through the practical application of your word. God, we ask you to give us revelation. Open up our eyes to, to see and our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit come down and speak to us, Lord. We need you in this present evil day. And, and, and we know that, that, that you're able to deliver us, to guide us, to heal us, and to teach us, Lord. And our, open, our, our, our minds are open, our hearts are open, and our spirits are open to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your way. Amen. We're going to start at Luke chapter 10. You know, uh, Christ, Jesus was uh, d uh, discipling and teaching and, and sharing with the multitude. And he had picked 12 disciples. And as he went along, more and more people started following him. So he began to set in order the people that were following him. And the Bible says that after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before the face, before his face into every city and place whether, whether he himself would come. So Jesus is, he, he selected 70 more, 70 more believers in him. And he sent them out two by two. Two is a number of witness. The Bible says where two or more are gathered together in them. And I, he said, I would be in the midst of them. And two is a number of witness. It bears witness of something. It validates. It confirms. When you have two, it's confirmation. So he's sending them out. So that they could, you know, it's not good for man to be alone. Amen. So two is a good number because two represent the need for each other. Amen. In the places that I'm weak, you're strong. In the places that you're weak, I'm strong. And the Bible says that, that, that uh, two is better than one. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. So he's sending them out together so that they can have each other's back and they can bear witness of the things that Jesus has said and that he has done. Amen. And he sent them two by two. And the Bible said in verse number two in the chapter of Luke chapter two, therefore he said unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Even then, even back then, with all the great miracles that were happening throughout the biblical times until he, until he came, they were still suffering a, so, a shortage of evangelists, of those that would go and tell the people that did not know or who had forgotten the life and the and the power that God has given the world through his mighty acts. There wasn't that many people that walked through the earth that testified 
and that and that we're living a life for God. And he said, truly, the harvest is few. The laborers are few, but the harvest is plenty. He said, there's a lot of people out here that need to know the good news of Jesus Christ, but there's not a lot of people that are willing to sacrifice to go and to share the good news. And we see that now. We see that there's so there's a need so much to minister to the homeless, so much uh, a need to minister to families that are torn apart by divorce, right? Torn apart by drug addiction, amen. All over the world, torn apart by by uh, by uh, by famine, by sickness, torn apart by by fear. Uh, 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 there's so many people that are torn. There's so there's such a big need for people to know the gospel. There's people torn apart by being in 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 in, in, in witchcraft, amen, and in in in, in uh, 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 tarot card reading, and in 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 these things, astrology, spiritualists. You know the things that sound and look like religious godliness and righteousness. But but there's no power in it. You know, the Bible says that 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 that, that it has a form of godliness, but it not denies the power thereof. You know, that's not the power that God has. God, when Jesus rose from the dead and he met them on the mountain before he ascended, he said, Behold, all power was given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right, man? And, and, and it's that kind of power that God has that he wants to issue to his people so that we can overcome the temptations of the world that offers us power that only lasts for a season. Popularity and fame and riches that only last for a little while, amen? But he says, I will give you the power, amen? And he's talking about the power and the blessings that come from heaven are eternal. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. So he says that the laborers are few. And we see that the laborers are few right now. So it, we encourage each other that when you have an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ, that you do it. That you allow the Lord to lead you into what to share so that you can harvest unto God. A soul. Amen. Jesus is about souls. Right? He said he, he wants your eternal soul to be with him forever. He says, What advantage or benefit is it to you or to me to gain everything in this world and to lose your soul? So it's our job. To spread the good news. So Jesus tells the 70. Go your ways. Behold I send you forth. As lambs amongst wolves. Wolves. He said I'm going to send you out. And you're innocent. And you're pure. And you're needy. Because I'm the shepherd. And you are my sheep. And But I'm going to send you out. Into this hostile world. Full of wolves. But you lean on me, and I'm your shepherd, and I'll keep you. But understand, you're vulnerable. A lamb is vulnerable. And we have to understand that if you want the power that comes on high, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable, even among your enemies. You have to be vulnerable. Sometimes they're going to gnaw at you. Sometimes they're going to try to dash you to pieces. But... When you're weak, our good shepherd is strong. Amen. So, so, so in 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 our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Just like a lamb who cannot defend itself, but depends on the shepherd. We have to understand that the battle's not ours. The battle's the Lord, and the Lord is our shepherd, and he we we shall not want. He'll lead us right beside the still waters. 
He'll lead us in the green pastures. He'll restore our soul. Amen. His rod and his staff, he'll comfort us. Amen. The Bible says, neither carry your purse, nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. He's saying the honor that you give to me, give to no man. Don't trust in your money. Amen. Don't trust in, in yourself. He says, I'm going to supply your every need. He says, uh, in whatever house you enter, say peace, peace be to you. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest on you. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give you. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. So he's saying that I'm going to send you to these, these communities. And whatever house receives you, they're going to provide for you. He said, don't be going house to house. I'm going to give you a place that you can dwell. And it's all about trust. He says that he, you can, he's going to support you through your ministry. And he said, whatsoever city you enter... And they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. And he says that you can heal the you can heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh to you. So he's saying when you go and these guys receive you, their faith is gonna make them whole. But through you, I'm gonna use you to provide healing. So that's a that's a key for us. That when you see these people that know that you're a man or woman of God and they're asking you and they're and they're and they're confiding in you and they're leaning on you for your advice and your spiritual uh, 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 um, knowledge and you are pouring out into them God's going to give you the opportunity to minister to them and through your ministering to them they can be healed. Amen. He says, uh, the people that reject you, though, go your way into the streets on the same and say, even the very dust of the city was cleaved on us. Do you wipe off against you, notwithstanding? Be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. He says, the people that don't receive you, don't take it personal. Let them know that you come in the name of the Lord and they haven't rejected you. They've re rejected God. And Jesus is saying to them to let them know that they had an opportunity to receive Jesus. But they rejected him. Said Jesus has come nigh to you. But I say unto you that it will be more tolerable in that day of Sodom than that for that city. So it said it's going to be worse to those people that be judged that rejected the gospel than those people that got judged in Sodom and Gomorrah. But I say unto you that it should be, I mean, uh, number number uh, 13, he starts talking about these cities that are going to be uh, destroyed because they rejected Jesus. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, Woe unto thee, but say the I. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in the sackcloth and ashes. He said, if I would have done in these cities of Tyre and Sidon what I did in Chorazin and Bethsaida, they would have repented. And they would have repented open heart openly in front of everybody in the community but he says excuse me excuse me excuse me but it shall be more tolerable in Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you and thou Capernaum which are exalted unto heaven thou shalt be thrust down to hell He'll, he that heareth you heareth me and he that despises you despises me and he that despises me despises him that sent me so he's saying all these cities, all these towns that reject the word of God, the warning and the good news together, when they reject correction, when they reject turning from their ways, when they reject 
the sacrifices that, that Jesus did and, 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 and all the things that he represents, they're not rejecting the people that are saying it. They're rejecting God himself. And he's saying that you're not only rejecting me, but you're despising me. And that's what wolves do. Wolves prey on the innocent. The Bible says that as the 70 came back, in verse number 17, the 70, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto, unto us through your name. Hallelujah. Look at God. When you go in the name of the Lord, and you follow the word of the Lord, when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and you truly are doing what God is asking you to do, the way God is asking you to do it, He will fill your heart with so much joy, and He will allow you to see the wonder-working power of God that works through you to to touch and transform other people's lives. Amen. He wants to use you as a vessel. And as you pour out to others, God pours into you. Amen. And these guys come back with so much joy. They're testifying, God, the devils are even subject to us through your name. They were, they were doing such a powerful work in those cities that they were deliverance. People were being delivered from demonic spirits, delivered from demonic attacks, delivered from oppression from the devils and, 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 and this evil spirits that were, that were seducing and oppressing them and keeping them in bondage. Praise God. Jesus said unto them in verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus is testifying of the power of God. They were testifying the power of, 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 of the work that they could do through the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He said, I saw my father cast down Satan himself. He's like, you think you saw something? Let me tell you, I saw one of the greatest moves of God that has ever been made. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And the Bible says in verse number 19, I behold, he's like, pay attention, pay attention. He said, behold, that means pay attention. He's telling the 70, look, look, I, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to release something. I want you to be, give me your undivided attention. He said, I give you power. Not so you can have a title and be Mr. Doctorate, doctor of all things that come from God and Jesus Christ. No, he says, I give you power to tread on scorpions and snakes and over all power of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt you. And he says, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Come on, somebody. That's power. He said, I got the power to give you, to make the devil subject to you, but don't rejoice because you are walking in this anointing to move the devil's and to free people from the oppression of evil spirits. He says, that's not why you rejoice. Rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Come on, somebody. He said, rejoice because this stuff is temporary. 
says, don't rejoice because these devils are subject to you. Don't rejoice because you have the victory in this earth. Rejoice because your name is written in heaven. That's a victory that's above every other victory. Yeah. That's a victory that breaks the oppression that these devils try to put on you and put on all the people in this world. He says, don't rejoice. rejoice. Don't rejoice because of that. Rejoice because your name in heaven. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That God has power to deliver you. He's given you power power to tread on scorpions and snakes and over all power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. He said you receive this power because you chose to serve me. You want to know what's in it for you? What's in it for you is eternal life my man. You want to know what's in, it, what's in it for me? Eternal life is in it for me. I please God because he's forgiven me for a much. Hey Amen. Not even in my past, but in my present too. We fall every day. We fall. We make mistakes every day. We sin. We have a sinful nature. But a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And he turns back to the Lord from which he has turned his back on. He says, Lord, change me. And lead me and guide me in the paths of righteousness. And I will follow you as you show me how. It's a heart toward God. It is desire to please God. It's not standing and staying and making excuses for the sin that you're in. It's turning from your sin and forsaking your sin. And reaching toward that prize, toward the high calling that's within Christ Jesus. Father... We thank you for this word. And there's people that need to hear this, Father. There's people that are lost, that are broken, that are hurting, that are confused. They're, they're into spiritualism and mysticism. Maybe they're agnostic and atheist and they don't even believe in you. Father, Father we know that you died you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for all that he would seek and save that which is lost and we pray that you would loose the anointing to touch those people that are lost they would turn from their way that you would heal them from their sickness and their disease, from their emotional, physical, struggles. Lord, we just ask you right now, God, that as we believe you and seek you, that you would give us that power, Lord, to be able to speak those words that you have written on our hearts And that you would share with those that you use us to speak to your powerful word to break every chain. That you would share with them your love and they would know you personally and privately. And that you would cause them, Lord Jesus, to confess their sins, that you would cause them to turn from their wicked ways, that you would allow them, Lord Jesus, an opportunity to know you. God, and I pray for that, those lost souls that their hearts would be convicted 
And they would know that they're lost without you. They would know that they would, they would be lost without Jesus. And they would know in their, their heart and in their mind and in their soul and in their being that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the truth, that Jesus is the life. And no man comes to the Father except through Jesus. And they would cry out to Jesus. And Jesus, that you would change their life. And they would become a witness like these 70 that, that, is, that, is, that, that we discussed in, in, in Luke chapter 10. And that you would use them in a powerful way to spread the good news through their circle of influence, Lord. And we pray that this week will be filled with your mercy and your grace. For we know that your mercy endures forever. And that we would not be distracted by the demonic attacks. We know we're sheep sent among wolves, Lord. And we're asking you for wisdom. We're asking you for godly wisdom, godly knowledge, godly understanding. And godly guidance. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, and lead us and guide us into all truth. In your holy name we pray. In Jesus' name we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. The Bible says, notwithstanding, hallelujah, it says, notwithstanding, in verse number 20, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If you've given your life to the Lord and you ever find yourself just you find yourself just rejoicing on a surface level. And, and, and you're, you're glad because God is using you. And that's good. It's good. It's great. But God wants you to take it to the next level and understand your relationship with Him is a relationship where He is seated at the right hand of God. And you, my friend, your name is written in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life. And, and, and if, you, if, you, if, you, if you could get that idea... in your mind, in your heart, and in your soul, that he has written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, I guarantee it. It will elevate your ability to communicate the power of God into the lives of those that are lost and hurting. Amen. Rejoice rejoice amen that your name is written in heaven not because of what you've done but everything that Jesus did was so that he could have you with him forever amen forever and it shuts the mouth of the devil no matter what you're going through. You say, devil, shut up. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God has given me power to tread on scorpions and snakes and over all power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt me or my family or the things that God has me to do. Amen. There is victory in Jesus Christ because of what he's done on the cross and the empty grave and the ascension unto heaven amen and he's coming back again to receive unto himself his own amen blessed be the name of the lord i love you guys i'm praying for you i pray that you will just talk to god every day and ask him to share with you those things that is pertinent in your life to give you the ability to navigate through your life. Amen. I pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for joining this uh, this study today. It, it went all over the place, but I, I really enjoy you being with me, and I, I appreciate your prayers. 
Love you. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.